Hi, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in again. Today, what am I doing? Well, we've got the 185 Rotax. This is the initial starting uh, warm up and um, mixture adjustments on the carburetor. Uh, now there was, oh, I'm putting this, editing this now, there was some technical issues. The microphone quit working and the camera fell over. Uh, anyway, bear with me and what I got, what I got is what I got. <laughs> So I've just switched out the engines. I've removed number one engine, which I've already had running and adjusted the carburetor on. Um, this is number two engine, of course, and I'm going to uh, get you to come along while I do my initial startup and adjustments on this one. So how am I running this? Well, it's on the back of my van, and this here is one of those vice mounts that you can buy um, that I had for another project. And I just took some scrap steel and I made um, a little triangular shaped attachment there so that I can bolt the engine on. So kind of cool. Uh, now, what I'm doing right now is, um, as you can see, the spark plug is out and I have the fuel line is about 12 feet long and I'm not priming it so in other words I'm pull I took the plug out so I can pull so another technical surprise here this is when I find out that there's no sound now so the microphone stopped working for some reason anyway what I'm uh, doing here is the fuel line which is the nice kind of I love this stuff because you can see through it it's empty all the way back to the fuel tank and the if I didn't say that already, it's 12 feet away. Now I'm going to pull the rope, rotate the engine, make the fuel pump function. I want to see that this fuel pump is able to suck fuel all the way. That's a long way to go. All the way from the tank, all the way up to the carburetor. So it's a nice way to do this on a fuel pump because you, now we can prove out right in front of your eyes that it actually works and it draws fuel up so uh, a great test on that then um, once the fuel arrives there um, I think it's coming up here pretty soon um, I guess I should pull it some more and see what happens all right oh there we go there's the fuel right there we can see it going up the line now so that's nice every pull it takes another surge of fuel goes up the line perfect just what I wanted to see now, I could have just primed it through the carburetor with some gas and made it start, but this is the kind of stuff that you, that I, that I think I need to do to make sure that I can prove out all of this works. So, important step. I could have got it running a lot quicker if I had just sprayed gas in the carburetor. At any rate, uh, now what are we doing now? Okay, needs a spark plug to start, so let's put the spark plug back in. And a uh, nice, fresh NGK spark plug and uh, torque it to specs and then we'll proceed with uh, starting this up so there we go torque it plug wire is going to go back on and now what am i coming what's coming up next um okay so moving the camera now and uh so this red wire here is a jumper wire and it's jumper alligator clipped onto this black one that goes into the engine, which is the ground to shut it off, the P-lead. So here it clips on the metal right there if I want to turn the engine off. So I just wanted to show you that's how I would turn the engine off. So just for an understanding of how this compression release that's in here operates, it's, it's pretty neat. So right now it's in the out position, like the running position, now, if I get the rope, I can barely pull it. Like, I'm pulling pretty hard on there. So, trying to start this is going to be pretty tough. So, how does it work? Well, when I apply the choke, it's going to lift up this end of the bracket, which is going to push that towards the engine, which is going to open the compression release. So, let's, uh, let's move the choke. Here we go. So this came up, 
that went that way and the compression release is is open and now I can pull the rope much easier and we can hear it through the sound so that's compression coming out of the compression release as soon as it starts um, it's going to push back the pressure in the cylinder is going to be greater than the force here and it's going to come out and then it'll be sealed up getting the benefit of all of its cylinder pressure so cool eh? so here we go so I've moved it out in its running position. The choke is on. It makes a little clicky noise when it goes in. And now I can turn the, uh, rotate the engine with the rope easily. So that's what a compression release is all about. All about starting. So now I'm ready to proceed and start the engine. You probably notice it's going to smoke quite a bit when it starts. Um, I use quite a bit of oil and lubricants when I put these engines together uh, but uh, it'll uh, it'll uh, stop smoking soon enough okay definitely over choked it and flooded it so all right let's Go ahead again.
So here I am sitting here editing this and putting this all together. Uh, and, and I'm going, whoa, that engine sounds really, really strange. And it's because of these uh, background uh, noise deadening microphones. They pick up your voice really nice, but everything else is pretty weird. So uh, it, it doesn't really sound like it just did, <laughs> if you get my meaning. <laughs> now, I have a little clip next um, that is actually without the microphone on. I was just using the phone on the stand. I forgot to turn the mic on. Luckily, because now I have uh, the actual engine sound. So the next little clip is the first engine uh, running after I just first started it and uh, before I did the uh, carburetor adjustments on it. So uh, <laughs> anyway, technology at its best. Thanks so much for tuning in today and spending some time with me. I appreciate it. It uh, definitely was a uh, challenging kind of a video, that's for sure. <laughs> anyway, like, share, subscribe, all those other things. Thanks. Bye now.